Okay, so I'm just going to start since I think most of you are here by now. Today we'll be discussing Earth consumption. So having taken a look at the infographic that I sent, do you guys understand what Earth consumption is? Okay, I can see many confused faces, so I'll explain. Earth consumption is when humans strip the natural environment of its resources for anthropocentric purposes. The problem is that when consumption grows, the resources that we take cannot be replenished in time and the subsequent waste we produce cannot be properly managed. This leads to issues like environmental degradation. But as more and more people are realizing the danger of earth consumption, we can see a corresponding rise in ecocentric media like The Giving Tree, Wally, and Avatar, just to name a few. Prof, Prof, so what are these films and books trying to tell us about earth consumption? Great question. In The Giving Tree, we see nature as providing us with many of its fruits, as portrayed by the tree giving the boy its leaves, apples, and so much more. This reflects upon the fact that humans often forget to reciprocate the care which our environment grants us. Wally, on the other hand, warns us of the consequences of our consumption as we exhaust our Earth's natural resources. We ought to be careful in our corporate interests in order to prevent big companies from polluting the environment and reducing the habitability of our Earth. And finally, Avatar depicts human exploitation of an alien species and their natural habitat, cautioning us against the destruction of our very own planet. Um, but Prof, wouldn't overconsumption be more of a problem for other countries since Singapore is trying to be sustainable and eco-friendly? Here's the thing. Many Singaporeans already know that we are consuming far too much, but at the same time, too few of us are doing enough about it to make a difference. As a result, our waste levels are quickly becoming too high for us to manage. For example, our only landfill is currently projected to run out of space within the next 16 years if our habits don't change fast enough. Nevertheless, it is also important to understand how different socio-economic situations affect the way that we consume waste. If we assume individuals to be rational decision makers, then they would make decisions out of self-interest. This means that if the cost of producing waste remains within the means of the individual or household, then there is a tendency for those with the highest socio-economic status to generate more waste. For example, if I could afford to pay for garbage disposal services or consume more waste-intensive goods, then based on this economic model, why would I want to take the extra effort of producing less waste? However, this is not true all the time. For example, even if I could afford to pay more in order to generate more waste, I might choose not to out of my own eco-conscious beliefs and thus still generate less waste. But Prof, if everyone knows about the danger of overconsumption, why aren't Singaporeans changing their habits to reduce waste? Good question. It's much harder to get people to change their behaviours on a large scale within a short span of time, especially if they don't see these changes having any immediate effects. That's why out of the three R's, we mostly see recycling being emphasised because it requires the least amount of effort, with recycling bins found throughout Singapore. But this is simply not enough. After all, there's a reason why recycling is the last R in the cycle. Uh, Marilyn, you seem a bit confused. Is there anything you want to clarify? Uh, can I ask, are there any ways that can counter the limitations? of these of, of solutions for overconsumption, biomass seems a bit difficult. Didn't you mention that large numbers like the ones displayed in the bottle vending machine could also could cause people to be desensitized towards it? Oh, well, nice that you're thinking ahead. I think that though some might not have the possibility to be solved currently, like biomass not being 100% clean, they are still much better than what we use now. We shouldn't aim to go for all or nothing anyway, since that just makes Singaporeans think that their efforts aren't good enough. However, there are other possibilities for the other limitations, such as improving the public's reception towards the vending machines. For example, what if those vending machines help show individuals just how much of an impact they have made from a single use, like showing the number of plastic bottles saved in a day, or showing relative comparisons between the vending machine in one location with another. That would improve the public's reception, wouldn't it? What other solutions can you think of? Hmm. Etienne, what do you think? Um, I guess we can sort of try to foster a connection between the children and the environment so that they start to care about the environment more. And maybe we can invite experts down to the schools so that they are educated about how to reduce their consumption. That's a really good idea. In fact, schools like Woodgrove Primary already do this by bringing in environmental specialists to help teach children on how to recycle materials in order to cultivate good, eco-friendly habits from young. Okay, so that's all for today, and you can all leave the call now.